Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the sixth of nine videos in the Building a Wordle App clone series. In this video, we'll be adding in animations and background colors for our board tiles and keyboard. We'll introduce a second view for our guest letter and animate a transition by flipping the letter over and changing the background color. We'll also be changing the colors of the keys after a guess has been made to match the letter matching background colors. If you like this series, please leave a comment below and give the video a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and make sure you ring the bell to get notified of new videos. If you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. As we do at the start of every video, make sure that we start a new branch and we'll start our new branch from Lesson 5, and we'll call it Lesson 6. Also, make sure that it's checked out as the current branch. Now, I have to admit that my animation skills are not so great, so to reproduce the letter flipping over animation to reveal a different background color, I decided to search to see if someone else had a solution out there that I could modify. Paul Hudson on his Hacking with Swift Plus site has the best solution that I could find, but since that is a paid service, I don't feel it's right for me to share his code. I did, however, find another solution that can work for me as well, and that was by Samuel Doe on his YouTube channel, Experimental Swift UI. I'll leave a link in the notes below. He goes through a solution that is kind of what I need, but not exactly. Here is just a little bit of the end of the video. At 826, it shows that this technique of flipping something over. The difference is that I want to animate an array of cards, and I want to do it over the horizontal axis and not the vertical axis. And I don't want to have to tap five times to flip it over. I want it to happen as soon as I enter the word. So if you want to learn this technique, you can watch his video. I'm going to go to his GitHub repo so you can follow along with me here, and I'll take his code and modify it to meet our needs. The way it works is that you create two basically identical views that flip over and replace each other when a Boolean property is toggled. So I'll copy the struct that's called flashcard to my clipboard, and I'll return to my project. In the Animations folder, I'm going to create a new file, and I'm going to call it Flip View. I'm going to change the import to Swift UI, and I'll paste the copy text into the body. I'm going to rename Flashcard to Flip View, as it makes more sense in our project to name it like that. Now we're going to be binding this new view to a boolean is flipped item from the is flipped array of all of our letters. Now remember we initialize that as an array of booleans all false. This will require an additional argument for our initializer, so we can add that before our view builder, and then when we assign this to the is flipped binding which requires the use of an underscore. The rotation will be around the x-axis and not the y-axis. So let me change that here on lines 34 and 47 by reversing the x and y. In Samuel's solution, he uses an on-tap gesture to flip the card and call the flip flashcard function. We want this done in code based on the changing status of the isFlip property. So we can create an onChangeObserver to do that for us. So onChangeOf the isFlipped binding, we don't need that value. We're just going to call the flip flashcard when that occurs. We'll also not need these paddings and view modifiers here, because we're going to be passing in our views fully formed. Great. That's all there is that we have to do here. What we need to do now is to return to our guess view and replace this single text view that represents the front side of our guess 
with a flip view that has two sides, a front and a back. And this text view will be the front. And we have an almost duplicate card for the back with two changes, the background color and the foreground color. So let's start by creating our flip view, binding it to our guess card flipped index. For the front then, we can move this text view in, but leave the font and border outside because it will be the same for both. For the back, we'll copy and paste the front view, but we'll change the foreground color to be always white. And then the background is going to be our guesses background color for that index. And that's what we just did in the previous video. We figured out what those background colors are. Now that that's in place, we can go back and work on our data model. So when a new game is started, we have to make sure that our try index is always set back to zero. And we'll also have to change the game over property to false if this is a new game. In order to test now, I want to make sure I know what word has been chosen as our selected word or secret word. So let me print that out to the console. It'll just make it easier for me to enter a guess word. Within the set current guess colors function then, once we've determined that the word is valid, we have assigned the correct background colors, we'll need to flip the cards. We'll need to create a function for that and pass in the row that we're on. So I'll create a function called flip cards with one parameter, row, that's an int. Now you might think that this is redundant because we know the row and it's try index, but why do we need to pass it in as a row? Well, I'll explain that in a second. Inside the function, we'll create a loop for each column running from zero through four. And within the loop, we can toggle our guess for that row's card flip Boolean property at that column. Now we want there to be a slight delay after each one though, so that it will run sequentially rather than all at once. So for this, I can use a dispatch queue dot main async after, and then use a delay that will be from now plus the column index times 0 0.2, but it needs to be a double. Then within that dispatch queue, we can toggle that card flipped Boolean property for that column. Now back in the set current guess colors, we can flip cards for that try index. And the reason why I am passing this in as a copy of try index is because by the time those five dispatch queues have run, we've already updated and incremented that index, that try index. So we want to make sure that we fix it at the time we pass it in. And we can remove those print statements now. Let's give this a try. The word is algae. So let's try about. Nice, the cards flip, but they're flipping in the wrong direction. They should be flipping from the top down. Also, don't worry about these warnings. They do not show up when you run on a real device. Return to flip view, and I need to switch this from positive 180 to negative 180. Let's try again. This time the word is gnome. So let's try great. The letters flip correctly and we get the correct background colors, but we're not able to enter a new word as our keyboard is disabled. I forgot to do one thing. If I return to this Wordle data model, if the word has been verified, 
and we've set our colors. We increase the try index, but we'll need to reset our current word back to an empty string. This time we get Tygon, whatever that means. Let me try Train first and tap on Enter. And the cards flip and the backgrounds are perfect. Let's enter a new word and notice now it's on the second row. This time I'm entering a word that's not in the dictionary and the row shakes. Perfect. Let's backspace and enter the correct word this time. All the letters flip over green and I'm done. The keyboard locks up because the game is over. In the next video we'll present a notice and allow our users to start a new game. But today we still have to color the backgrounds of those keys using the used colors. So let's test one more though, but fail to enter a correct word six times. Perfect. The board locks up after six incorrect tries and we even see you lose on the console. If we're going to change the colors of the keys on the keyboard, we're going to have to keep track of the letters used and know which ones that we have used are correctly placed which ones are incorrect but misplaced, and which ones are not in the word at all. So let's start by creating two empty arrays for the first two cases. One called match letters, it's an array of string, that's an empty array. And the second one called misplaced letters, again another array of string starting out as an empty array. And then every time that we start a new game, we'll have to reset them back to an empty array so that we do that in our populate defaults function. The set current guess colors function is the best place to do this as that's where we're checking and matching our letters. So inside the first loop where we check for correctly placed letters, we can check to see if the match letter array already contains that guess letter. If not, we can append it to that array. Then we can set our key color dictionary value for that letter to correct. We should also be checking to see if that letter is in the misplaced letters array and remove it. And so for this, we'll need to know the index. So if let index is equal to misplaced letters, first index, where the iterated value is equal to the guess letter. And if that's the case, then we'll remove the letter at that index. In the section where we check for misplaced letters, we can first check to see if our misplaced letters and our match letters array don't yet contain that guess letter and then append it to the match letters array if that's the case. So we can just copy the code from above and change match letters to misplaced letters and add that additional check. And then before we actually flip the cards, we'll have to get access to that guess letter once more and then do a check to see whether or not our key colors guess letter is not already been marked as being correct or misplaced and set it to be wrong if it isn't. Let's test this out now. The word is promo. So let's try posts. This flips the cards and I see that the key colors match what I have in the guess. Let me try prime. 
more letters on the keyboard are filled correctly. Let's guess promo now for our third guess. Now the O has been corrected to display green because it's now in the correct location. Perfect. Well, we're getting close to finishing our app. In the next video, we'll be presenting nice notices when you guess a word correctly or incorrectly, like you see here in the web app. When the game is finished, whether you win or lose, your results are saved, and then they're presented to you as a statistic on your view. Unlike the web version, though, we're not going to have to wait for the next game because we're going to present a new game button when the game is over. Well, that's it for today's video. But first, make sure you commit to your repository.